Today, young people from all over the world are leading the way, speaking passionately from their hearts about the state of emergency created by climate change and the need for immediate action. Inspired and challenged by their commitment, we add our voices and we commit our action, deeply aware of the spiritual crisis we face. When our youngest daughter was very small, our nighttime routine was always to tell stories and then to say our prayers together. And her prayers always started with the same bidding. Please, Lord, let there be enough water. Through the prayers of my daughter, I can hear the whispers of the generations to come, our children's children's children, pleading with us now. We have not been mindful, and now the Earth's temperatures are rising. It is time for us to say amen to the prayers of our children. We all are part of the web of life, and right now we're living in alienation. This Earth's our home. God's relationship with creation is one of loving care and concern. As human beings created in the image of God, it is our responsibility to love creation as God does. I think more and more that um, Canadians are becoming aware of, of the language of uh, the earth is our common home. The creation is our neighbor, just like every human person is our neighbor. Climate change is an urgent spiritual matter because it is inseparably linked to our love of our Creator. Genesis paints an image of God walking among the trees of the Garden of Eden. Something so precious to God must surely be precious to us. There is a loss of balance. I see the ways in which the changes in the climate are causing extreme and unpredictable weather events, affecting those near and far. Climate change is a morally urgent matter to us because it affects mankind's future generations. It goes at the very core of our definition as human beings. It goes at the core of our relationship to one another and, and our relationship to the Earth. We need, as Canadians, to be very mindful of the impacts of climate change, particularly among the Inuit. I grieve that the places I enjoyed as a child may not be there for future generations, that Indigenous peoples' connection with the land is being harmed, that those who most depend on this connection to sustain life will be among the first to lose their homes. We grieve the destruction of the biosphere, of air, soil, and water. We also grieve the displacement of people due to um, loss of arable land. We grieve the extinction of species. And we grieve over our junk, the piles of what we throw away. We grieve over our focus on buying because we can, rather than asking what we really need and what the world needs. We grieve to the loss of all life due to our negligence and our selfish lifestyle. We grieve for the times our actions have not brought honor the splendor of God's creation. We cannot be bystanders and simply watch as the earth fades away. We have a God-given responsibility to pray and to act now in favor of the protection of the earth. I commit to reducing my carbon footprint, including reducing my use of single-use plastics and I commit to finding new ways for us to respond through word and in action in all that we do in ministry and mission to love the earth. We must commit to playing a more active role in the protection of what the Lord has given us in his creation. We recommit ourselves to rediscovering our call as advocates for all of creation. To advocate boldly for climate justice. We commit to making decisions about climate change in a way that respects the human rights of all peoples, particularly Indigenous peoples. To live responsibly, harmony and love, and for the love of all creatures. We commit as faith leaders 
to play our part to honestly and directly name our crisis, to raise awareness of its urgency, and to encourage transformative actions. I'm also gonna go for a stroll and pay attention to the beauty of God's creation. I have seen the positive change that happens when our lifestyles align with God's better way, which takes me to the book of Genesis and thinking about one of the earliest directives God gave us, which is to be good stewards of the earth. And that is the most compelling reason for me. If God desires it, it's for good reason. I am filled with hope because of the increasing amount of Canadians that are dedicated to earth care. I hope that Christians can come together across political and theological lines at this moment of urgent need for creation, to care for creation the way God has called us to. I pray that people of all faiths will lead the way in healing the earth. We hope for a spiritual transformation, a humility that comes with awareness that all the land, all the cosmos is sacred, a sacrament infused with meaning. I hope that we continue our tradition of care for one another and for the earth, to support one another to reduce our use of carbon and work toward a future that provides good jobs for all. I hope that generations to come, seven generations and more, can enjoy God's creation, which he made very good. I hope that we summon the courage, the common sense, and the collaboration to make creative and concrete change. For the love of all creation. For the love. For the love. For the love. For the love. For the love of all creation. For the love. For the love. For the love. For the love of all creation. Of all creation. For the love of all creation. What more will we do together for the love of the Creator? For the love of creation.